be dragons here. G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. I'm happy to introduce the start of a brand new series all about creature creation. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a unique take on how to create the base structure of a dragon skeleton. And in the following videos, we're going to work out how the musculature works and sculpt in the skin and details and eventually culminate this series with a quick video on how to texture the dragon that you can use it in renders, in animation, and in your films if you wish to make a video about a dragon. And for those who have graciously become my patrons on Patreon, you get bonus content such as working files, uh, extra recordings of me rigging and animating the dragon, and other cool stuff like that. I've also introduced a $3 tier for those who are on a smaller budget but still want to support the channel. So if you haven't joined already, feel free to join up and get all those cool little benefits that may help you out. So as I was spruiking my own crap here, I've gone ahead and imported a bunch of empties that contain my sketch and a few reference images because a little bit of reference goes a long, long, long fucking way. So I said we're going to start with the skeletal structure in this video and we're going to be using grease pencil for this. And the reason we're going to use grease pencil is because it's fast, it's easy, it's high performance, so it's not going to slow down your computer all that much, and you get results really, really damn quick. The skeletal structure will also aid in the future when we come to building out musculature and sculpting out the actual body of the dragon because we'll have a nice semi-realistic approach to how everything's structured. Now with the 3D cursor sitting just in front of the sketch, go ahead and add a grease pencil stroke. Not just a grease pencil object, but include the stroke as well. The reason for this is because it already adds the materials and the layers we need to get started. And then just jumping into draw mode, we're going to erase that initial line and then start drawing our dragon skeleton on top of everything. I'm also double checking to make sure that my brush stroke is just pure black, no pressure sensitivity on the opacity, but there is pressure sensitivity on the stroke width. So that will be very useful in the future. So yeah, just going ahead, erase that line. And now we're pretty much good to go to start drawing our skeleton. So you can see here, it's really, really straightforward. There's not much skill involved. You just need a tablet and the grease pencil and you're good to go. So as I'm doing here, I'm just blocking out really a silhouette of the skeletal structure throughout the body of the dragon. So I'm starting with the skull and I'm using the skeletal references on the side from all kinds of animals, birds, cats, dogs, even dinosaurs in some cases, because, you know, there's no such thing as a real dragon, um, but I still want to have a, a level of authenticity to the structure of the animal or creature that I'm creating. So why not go with something based in reality? The other challenge here is that I'm working with a four-legged dragon, which is something that is even more harder to find in nature because they just don't exist, four-legged creatures with wings are hard to come by unless you're going down the insect world. So having a variety of animals that include birds and say pterodactyls along with dogs and cats will give you a fair, uh, even enough spread to sort of get the right idea about how things could potentially work. One of the biggest issues really is just how the wings attach relative to the front legs because they'd have two different shoulder joints, for instance. Um, but that's the sort of thing you just gotta say, eh, fuck it, we'll work it out. We'll see how we go. But I digress, the, the, the method is pretty much the same across the board. Now, what I do recommend is that once you get to certain body parts that you think could be separated, uh, create separate grease pencil layers for those and maybe give them a different color or whatever you wanna do. Um, for instance, here, I want to articulate the jaw separately to the skull. And when I convert this grease pencil object to a mesh, I also want to keep it separate because I potentially want to animate the jaw as well. So um, it's a good idea to separate those elements. So in this case, I've gone ahead and created a brand new grease pencil layer. I've chosen a different color brush using a red material in this case. And I'm just working out the structure of the jaw. And I'm making sure that where it articulates, it's hinging from the relatively right area. So um, making sure that, you know, when there's a pivot, I'm pivoting it from the base of the skull. Now, how much detail you add to this entire thing is really down to what you need and what you want to do for your creature. Now, for me, it's really just being used as 
essentially a reference for the next part of this process of creating the creature, which will be for the musculature and the fleshy bits, you know, where I can place them and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not going to go too far down the ultra realistic realm of, you know, every bone being accurately drawn and all sorts of stuff. Really, I just want to have them in the right spot with the right kind of shape. And that's kind of it. So anything like connective bones and stuff like that, you know, where the knee joints are versus where the, the shin joints are. I'm not going to create separate layers for those because I don't really care about that. Um, but if you want to, you can. Uh, that's really up to you. So as I jump into time lapse mode here, because I'm just going to be drawing the skeleton for the next five minutes or so, I want to talk about why I'm doing this method even to begin with. I mean, I have the sketch of the creature right there behind the skeleton. Why am I bothering with going through this process? Well, the answer is quite simple, is that it's fast. It's really fast to get a result here. Really, really fast. Um, the cool thing about this is that the grease pencil is really flexible when it comes to making mistakes and fixing up any errors and all other sort of stuff. The other cool thing about that is we get to convert this to a mesh eventually and we get to mirror out the wings and the legs and the ribs and all that sort of stuff and get an idea of the skeletal structure in 3D space before we uh, dedicate so much time and effort into creating what is essentially a fully fledged model. Now, there are moments when you're sketching out a 3D model in sculpt mode or whatever and you are you get to a point and just say, this just looks like absolute trash. The proportions are all wrong. Everything's just out of place. It's just, I've just wasted hours upon hours upon hours of this work on something that I'm not happy with. And the, the real answer there is that you could have just spent more time planning. And this is really just a planning stage just in 3D space with some new cool friggin' tools. By just sketching out the skeleton and working out the sort of volumes of the bones and where the ribcage is situated and the kind of structures you want to build out, you're saving yourself so much more time in the long run nailing out these things first than you are going into sculpt mode and just starting to build out these highly complex models with super high polys and, you know, reduced editability and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, in this case, what we can do is you can draw whatever you like, you can shape it any way you like, you can remove or add or, you know, adapt new ideas pretty quickly. I mean, you can change the structure of this wing in a matter of minutes rather than you having to you know, make a fucking tube and extrude out this shit and, you know, all that sort of crap. You don't need to worry about that here. You just draw it, just draw it. And you turn a, you know, a, even a 10 minute little task into something that could take maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds. Um, so again, really, really cool stuff. Even here, when I'm drawing the feet, I'm going with a bird-like talon for the foot. You know, if I wanted to change it to something more like a dog or a lizard or something like that, that's just a matter of me erasing that friggin' foot and just replacing it with a new sketch. It doesn't take much mental effort on my part either to make those changes. That's another big thing about this. If you can do this sort of stuff fairly easily and listen to a podcast without having to turn off the podcast to concentrate on what you're doing, then you're on the right track in my opinion. If you're constantly having to turn off music or turn off your podcast or you know just be in complete silence while you're just focusing on one little thing of a particular model, then you're probably at a point where you're overcomplicating things and it's time to take a step back and see what you're doing. All right, so the sketch is done. Uh, I probably spent about, I don't know, 45 minutes or maybe half an hour. I can't remember how much I spent exactly making that little sketch. But again, compared to modeling out something from scratch, it's definitely a lot quicker. So what I'm gonna do now in the grease pencil object, I'm gonna mirror the, um, the sketch using a mirror modifier. And as you can see here, the mirror is in the wrong direction. So what I'm gonna do is jump into edit mode within the grease pencil object, unlock all of my layers that I've got, and then I'm going to just rotate it along the Z axis, in my case, to sort of be aligned to the X axis, like a regular model would. So you can see the red line, that's my X axis. Uh, most models or pretty much any model you make that has a character uh, centric design, kind of has to be aligned from the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and align it to the x-axis and just separate the two halves away from the center of that um, that pivot point. 
And as you can see here, we have essentially two halves of the same creature ready to roll just by pulling it apart in edit mode using the mirror modifier within the grease pencil, which is, again, amazing stuff. Like the fact that you can do modifiers on grease pencil is already cool enough. But there you go. We got our two halves of the dragon. And now what we can do in edit mode is start to push and pull the different elements of the sketch that we've made to create volume. So I'm gonna start off with the spinal cord and the ribs. So the spinal cord itself uh, obviously is dead center to the animal or the creature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, select all those parts and just push them toward the center. And you can see it basically separates because they're all separate strokes. They're essentially just fancy curves um, that are drawn in 3D space. So uh, you can separate them as separate objects. Um, now for the rib cage, I'm going to be using a soft select tool to do uh, the volume of the rib cage. So you can see here, I've, I've made a separate window as well, just to see everything without any distraction. So that's always a good way to visualizing what you're doing in a more sort of holistic way. And now I'm going to go ahead and select different elements of the rib cage to bring into shape. So I'm going to use soft select for that. So turn that on. I'm going to use it with connected turn on for now. And then I may turn that off and on as we go along. But with soft select turned on and a fairly wide uh, radius, you can see that I can push and pull the curves of the grease pencil lines to sort of get the volume of the rib cage, which again is awesome. It is so cool. So um, you can see already we're starting to get volume and uh, without really having to do any sculpting, any modeling or anything really. We're just working out the volumes now uh, in a matter of seconds rather than in a matter of minutes or hours. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through the entirety of my animal and or creature and sort of work out based on my sketches, based on my reference images as well, where the bone placement is, where the volumes are and sort of work out my hips and my legs and where they're all going to go how the, bend, the bones are bending into place, everything like that, and just working out those volumes. And again, it's really adaptable. It's easy to edit. You can erase things. You can add new elements if you have to. It's not a problem. Um, and it's just easy to do. All you need is the move tool and soft select. So I'm going out and refining the, the volume of the rib cage there. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and do the jawline. And you can actually rotate entire parts as well, which is cool. So you can see uh, I've got a sort of V shape for the uh, the bottom of the jaw, similar to like a, a bird or a lizard or something like that. And um, just working out the palette of the dragon, which is again, amazing. Um, bringing in the head, the skull now, I'm making sure that the width of the skull is a little bit wider than the jaw in this case. Um, making sure that uh, there's volume on the top and the sides so that when the jaw opens and closes that it kind of sits within the skull. Um, again, just basic anatomy stuff. Uh, and again, it's fully adaptable at this stage, at least that you can, um, make any change you have to, if you make a mistake, uh, for the wings, again, I'm just going to go ahead and select the wings. Uh, I might lock off the other layers for now. Uh, so I don't have to worry about any sort of bleeding of, um, the soft select. I'm just going to rotate them in a sense that works for me. So, uh, I don't want to make it too narrow. I don't want to make it too wide, but you know, in a semi sort of neutral state. So, you know, get a nice little width going in there and make sure to rotate in both X, Y, and Z if you have to. So in my case, I'm pivoting it around a little bit to give it a little bit of a rotation in the, um, the Z and the Y. Uh, so, you know, they sort of can pivot around each other, I guess you can say. So yeah, uh, really cool stuff. You get to see the volume come to life really quickly. And in my case, I, I decided to bring the um, the wings forward a little bit closer to the uh, the clavicle and the shoulder blades of the legs uh, because I felt like the balance was out of place. So again, really adaptable, really quick and really easy to uh, make those changes. All right, finally, we have our legs. So just working out where the pivot of the, uh, the, the leg bones go with relation to the hips. And with the toes, I can actually duplicate grease pencil lines. So I'm getting my talons in there pretty easily. And you can see here, I'm doing a pretty half-assed attempt at making volume around the feet. Um, again, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna, I'm gonna remesh this in the future. So um, again, I'm not going down super accurate land, 
but I just need to get the volumes right. So as you can see here, the volume is all done and we've got a really cool looking little uh, structure there within the dragon. So now it's time to turn it into something that we can actually use in 3D. So we're going to convert this to a mesh. So the way we do that is that we select the object. In this case, we have to kind of select it per layer, it seems. So you select the layer and then you go convert to Bezier curve or to mesh, sorry, Bezier curve. Um, and you work your way down the layer stack and convert, 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 depending on how many layers you have, just convert them all. All right, and once you've done that, you'll have essentially what is a skeleton of a skeleton. Um, you'll have the curves that comprised of the grease pencil strokes. And now what we can do is select everything. And then we go to our curve settings and then go down to uh, bevel. And then hold down alt and increase the depth. And as you hold down alt and increase the depth, you start to get a solid structure that is renderable. When I say renderable, I mean renderable to light reflections, shadows, and all that sort of good stuff that you'd expect from a 3D model. Now, at this time, we only have one half of a dragon, so we need to re-add our mirror modifiers. So by re-adding those mirror modifiers, we get back the other half of our dragon. And essentially what we have is a very high poly, I guess you can say, curve-based object. Um, and as you can see, it's all doesn't have any materials or anything like that, no colors, but it gives you the opportunity to add them as a material, like any other 3D object. And you, you can still edit any mistakes you may have overlooked in the editing of the grease pencil objects. So don't be afraid to do that. You may find that the performance is a little bit bad because uh, the amount of subdivisions that Blender adds by default to curves is quite high. So we can always edit that down um, in the curve settings. So if you want to reduce, increase the performance, I suggest you do that. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second in this video. So as it stands, the, the Geo poly count is huge by default with curves. I don't know why, it just is in, inside of um, Blender. So if I turn on wireframe, you can just see how many spans there are. Easy solution, just go to the curve settings and reduce your subdivisions to like two and that will in, that will uh, improve the um the performance of the re well what is essentially the meshed version of these curves just go ahead and you know bring it down to a level that you think is best i'll just go for something that you know you can actually see the actual geometry a little bit um so usually one or two is fine okay now with that out the way we can't really rig this thing very easily with curves what we want to do is basically turn it into a pure geometry. And what we're gonna do is remesh this with a voxel remesher and then uh, remesh it again to have some semi-decent edge flow. Uh, we're not gonna re, we're not gonna friggin, uh, <laughs> we're not gonna retopo this thing by hand. We're gonna use our auto retopo for that. But as you can see, um, we can add materials to this thing. You can change the colors, do whatever you want. I've added some lights, for instance, you can see a light is affecting the uh, geometry of the dragon, even at this stage with four, we remesh it. So even at this stage, if you just want to be, just do something like this as, a, as an experiment, you don't have to go any further. If you're just using it as a basis for the next stage, you don't have to go any further. If you want to animate the dragon, you will have to go to the next stage in this video. But at this stage, lighting works, reflections work, adding materials works, Everything is perfect for doing something like a really cool, creepy render. Um, if you want to do something like that, go ahead and do it. Um, so the rest of this video is just going to be really about remeshing and how to optimize the geometry a little bit. What I will suggest about lighting though, is that try and make it a little bit more dynamic than just having a single sunlight. Maybe add a HDRI or um, a three point lighting, something simple like that, just to get the nice, sort of shadows in there or um, make it feel like it's sort of in a weird museum-like scenario. I don't know. 
it, it looks cooler when you add some more dynamic lighting. So um, go ahead and do that. And you know, the same principles with the materials apply to any other object that you make in 3D. Uh, you can use the node editor to give it more of a metallic look. You can add some ambient inclusion nodes. You can do all that sort of stuff to make it feel even like a bronze statue if you want to. Um, all that stuff can be done with this particular mesh. All right, so I'm gonna jump into the remeshing process now. And again, it's pretty damn straightforward, at least for now. I'm going to use the voxel remeshing uh, modifier inside of Blender. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new modifier and add the remesh tool. And you can see here the resolution is pretty low. So just holding down shift, I'd actually recommend holding down shift before, before you do this and then click and drag to sort of get the resolution you need. Now, once you've done that and you're happy with it, you can always go ahead and right click and then convert to mesh. And that's how you convert this thing down to a mesh. You don't apply the modifiers, you just right click on the object, convert to mesh. Now you may need a fairly high resolution. This is why having the separate objects actually works out as an advantage here because the performance actually just works better. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and remeshing those different elements. And in, in different parts, I may have to sort of separate. And I just do that by pushing P on the keyboard. But otherwise, I'm just remeshing um, at a resolution that I think works best. So once I was happy with what I've got, I converted the entire thing to a mesh. And then uh, I'm using the sculpt tool now to sort of soften out some of those weird noodly bits around the bones. Just very soft little brush and just smoothing those out with a smooth brush. Um, and that's about it. Now this thing is actually pure geometry. So the final thing I'm gonna do is kind of retopo this with an auto remesher that will give it some decent edge flow. I'm using a plugin called um, Quad Remesher and it's about 15 bucks for three months worth of license. Uh, I think it's invaluable. I think it's an awesome plugin. Uh, but you can use the Quad Remesher that's built into Blender to do this as well. It's not as efficient um, and it's not as fast, uh, but it still works. But I'm just using this one because it's fast, it's efficient, and you get a really good result out of the box. And this is the end result, a remeshed, retoppoed skeleton that can be animated and rigged. So that's really cool. So now you can do all the fun stuff like adding materials, doing the lighting, and if you have time and you really wanna do it, you can go ahead and add a rig, you can add animation, you can do whatever you need to do to you know, bring this thing to life. Now, if you wanna see my process on how I rigged this character or rigged this dragon as a skeleton and animated it, uh, you can sign up to my Patreon and download not just the videos that you're seeing here ad free, but bonus content such as time lapses of me rigging the character, animating the character, and also getting the source files. So that includes this model, the rig, and the animated file inside a single package. So if you're interested in that, feel free to sign up. Otherwise, good luck with the process. Thank you for watching. Have fun, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.